Active Campaign List Hygiene. In this video, we're going to cover how to identify contacts that are not interacting with your email. And then using automations, we'll remove them from list after a certain period of time has gone where they haven't interacted. And I'll be honest, the earlier you do it, the better, and I'll show you how. So let's dive right in. Inside my Active Campaign account, I've got two automations that I actually picked up from Active Campaign and I'm gonna make some slight modifications to them. So let me show you the two of them, and you definitely need both of them. They work in tandem. So I'll start with the inactive. On the surface, nothing really is going on here. Doesn't matter how they get put in here, but really we're gonna put them in via another automation or on sign up. So what we do is we simply wait for a certain amount of time, and I like to break things up into like 10 day increments so I can get an eyeball figure on how many people are at each step, you know, how, how many people I've got that aren't interactive versus just sending it waiting for a full 90 days before doing anything. So wait for 10 days, apply a tag that says they're inactive, wait for another 10, sorry, I should have said 30, then another 30, another tag, another 30, and finally another tag. And then we put them into a re-engagement automation. And it's a very, very simple automation. Looks like this. Wait a few minutes. And then what I like to do is um, try a few times. So what I'm gonna do is hold off until 7 a.m. in the contacts time zone for up to a day. Now the reason I do the up to a day is in case we don't know the contacts time zone. So it will then will fire at least within 24 hours or I should say the next day. I'm gonna send them a very simple email. Are you still interested? You know, if you're not, unsubscribe or don't worry, we'll remove you. Wait another 24 hours. And then I wanna go kind of to the other extreme. So I wanna go later in the evening, up to a day, if we don't know the time, and send them basically the exact same email. And if they still don't do something, wait for three days, unsubscribe them from all list. So that's kind of how we get rid of people that aren't interacting. Now, go back here. And the reason they're in here is because they haven't done anything. They haven't opened, haven't clicked. So they've got some people here that are on the verge of 90 days that have not opened or clicked in that time frame. And you know, that's what happens. People after a while either aren't interested or never were interested. Just kind of a fact of life. So this inactive automation just simply holds them in place until 90 days and then puts them into a re-engagement automation. Now we've got this active automation. I'll open this one up. And the key here is to notice the triggers. So if they read any email, if they click on a link, then they get put into this. Now, I'll be honest, reads any email is not a great one. Um, I've noticed, for instance, Gmail opens emails for you. Whenever I send out a broadcast and I look at the report, almost immediately a number of Gmail ad email addresses will have opened it, and I highly doubt that that's the case. But that's what happens. So you might consider not doing this and just go off of clicks. That's one way to do it. Now notice what we're doing. We're removing all the inactive tags that they may have. So we're doing a little cleanup. We're getting them out of the inactive automation. Uh, and you know what? Uh, yep, and then we put them right back in. That's it, very simple. So if they interact with an email, if they open, if they click, we do a tag cleanup, we get them out of the inactive automation, and then we basically restart them right back at the top so that they're now back in there, perpetually in this automation until they do something. Now, a little bit better might be to actually put it wait here. Um, wait for a day because you know, you know if they open an email they might open it twice like back to back They might click a link multiple times So I'm just gonna put a wait in there for one day before we actually end this automation um, Actually, I don't really need that, but I'm just gonna do it um, So there you've got two automations that handle people um, People's activity and does something about it now you can take this even further and uh, look at people when they signed up and do something a little bit earlier. So let me show you and then I'll come back and explain and actually update these automations. So I've got three automations here, super boring. They're all called first date and then whatever. Click, open, subscribe. So I've got custom fields, they're date-based, they're called 
first date click, first date open, first date subscribe. And I'm only gonna show you one, they're pretty much all the same with the exception of what the action is that got you in here. So it says contact clicks a link in any email. And notice it's any email, but it only runs once. You only want this to happen once. And then what do we do? We update their first date click field with the current time. That's it. Wait a day, don't really need that, but that's what you do. So just for fun, I'm gonna go back here and we'll do first date open. So contact reads any email. What do we do? We update the first date open to the current time. And then the same thing for subscribe. Basically any list, any open, any click. And the reason I wanna do that is this. I wanna come back here and I'm gonna add in a little bit of logic here. So watch what I'm gonna do here. Now keep in mind, you know, after 90 days of inactivity, they get put into this re-engagement, but I'm gonna be a little sneaky right here and put an if statement. So I'm going to say if, and what am I doing? Custom contact fields, and what was it? First date, uh, where are you? Oops, first date subscribe. And I wanna say is on or after the current date minus 11. That's a little tricky. You gotta kind of pay attention here. So what that means is they've been on the list for 10 days at this point, if they've gotten to this point. We're checking to see if their first subscribe date is within the last 11 days. In other words, are they new subscribers? Because people, remember, can get put back into this automation almost immediately. They open and then they get put right back into this. So if somebody has subscribed but has never opened, never clicked, they're gonna meet this requirement in that first 10 days. So uh, you know what, I wanna do just the opposite because I really wanna uh, da, 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 da. I actually want to move all this over to here. Yeah, let me delete this. Keep only the yes path. Yeah, you know what? I, I really want to drag all this over. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to go ahead and delete this. Keep only the yes path. It's always a little scary deleting stuff like that. So let me do this logic instead if and then we're going to look for first date subscribe is on or before i'm going to do current date minus 10. so that's going to keep people that have subscribed previously down the yes path so change the logic a little bit but accomplishing the same thing. Now, here's my reason for doing this. If somebody signed up and they don't even open, don't even click within the first 10 days, okay, I don't think they wanna be on the list. So I'm willing to get rid of them at this point. So just for fun, I always like to put a little weight in there so I can see if people are actually at that spot. And now I wanna to go to another action. So I'm gonna take that and drag it down here and immediately put them into the re-engagement. Because my, my thinking is that if somebody hasn't interacted the first time through um, after they subscribe after 10 days, and hopefully I've sent them email, that's kind of important that I've actually sent an email, at least one, hopefully more, um, that they're not interested. So I'm willing to risk it and send them into the re-engagement automation and potentially lose them within the first 10 days. But that way you do a good job of keeping your list clean. And the second thing is, what if you've got somebody that typed in an invalid email address? Do you really want them on your list for 90 days? This will certainly clean that up by doing this. And I'm showed you this. And then one other thing I would consider doing, um, for instance, if you wanna take it one step further, I've got a script, it's an email verification script that taps into either Bright Verify, Email Hippo, Zero Bounce, and works with ActiveCampaign or Infusionsoft. And if you send a webhook to this script on your site, what you'll find is you will get a signal back or a tag back based on what one of those services 
um, gave you back. So for instance, I think I've got this zero bounce hooked up to Infusionsoft. So what I would do is um, send people into this webhook. I would take the webhook right here, and this is an Infusionsoft one. If I would have provided my active campaign account details, I could use that. And then I want to, you know, I need to select which tags. Um, I'm just randomly doing stuff here. You know, which tags you want to associate with which uh, signal they send back. So just to give you an idea of what's possible, you could prefix or suffix these tags, but these are the tags I'd recommend creating for these services. So if you use zero bounce, I would create tags that have that name. And that's kind of why, you know, for me, I use profile dash, and it would be ZB. And then that would generate the tags that I would need. And yeah, I know that's not appropriate for email hippo or bright verify, but I would take these, copy these and create tags uh, using those and then go into, for instance, zero bounce. And then once they're created, I could apply those tags for each of the steps. But like I said, I would take this and if I go back to inactive, let me look here. Um, actually, the first thing I would do, I would do a web hook here. And that would tag the contact. And then honestly, if I had, for instance, an invalid, uh, if they came back with a tag that was invalid, I would simply unsubscribe them at that point. So I would put in another if right here. And I don't think I've got tags created for this, but I basically look for a tag. If the contact, for instance, does not have, I think it would be invalid, but again, I don't think I've created it. I haven't. But if they, if they didn't have like this tag, um, then they would continue down here. Otherwise, I would simply unsubscribe them from all list at that point. Something like that. So that's kind of my extended version of list hygiene for ActiveCampaign.